Happy Saturday! Join me in this artsy, crafty, fun, and yummy weekend as we learn how to create different, creative, and meaningful projects. I'm Teacher Det, and this is Teacher Vival Weekend Special, where we will engage in experiments, explore do-it-yourself activities, and many more. Have you ever experienced getting excited to eat your prepared meal only to find out it has already gone bad or it already tastes a little off by the time you're ready to eat them? Frustrating, right? Luckily, there are ways to make food last longer. For today's episode, we are going to discuss the natural food preservatives and the science behind them. Plus, we are also going to try some food preservation processes that we can easily do at home. Ready to begin? Let's go! Before we proceed to our discussion and activity today, let me first invite you all to a magical learning at home with Vibal's Happy Homeschool program. Just visit the Happy Homeschool website to learn more. See the link in the description. Preservatives are added to food to prevent spoilage caused by bacteria, molds, fungus, and yeast. Natural preservatives can keep food pressure for longer periods of time extending its shelf life. Fortunately, with knowledge and materials, we can easily preserve food in any setting. Everyone has heard about food preservatives, but how do they work? What is the secret behind food preservatives? Come on, let's find out! Natural food preservatives do not only prevent food from going to waste, they also help avoid the common chemical preservatives found in store-bought foods. Now, here are some common examples of natural food preservation and preservatives and how they work. Number 1. Freezing Freezing food is a quick, easy, and probably the most affordable method of food preservation. Many foods can be frozen without disruption of flavor, color, and nutritional value. Freezing slows down the growth of enzymes but does not eliminate them. When foods are removed from the freezer, microorganisms begin to grow once they reach a thawed state. So it is important to thaw all frozen goods in refrigeration to keep them safe. Number 2. Salt for curing or brining. Using salt for preservation is the oldest and most effective method. Salt can preserve anything from meat, poultry, and fish to desserts and vegetables because it removes moisture and reduces the amount of water available for bacteria to grow in. Making brine with salt and water to preserve meat or using salt directly to cure meat will help it last for several months. Number 3. Pickling This method has a high concentration of acid. Pickled products are saturated with acid to help with the preservation of pH levels of the food. Heat treating these products such as using a water bath or steam canning method is still important to prevent any potential bacterial growth that may remain in the jar. Number 4. Dehydrating Dehydrating is one of the oldest forms of food preservation. This method removes moisture from food. Removing moisture from the product reduces the ability of bacterial growth by taking away the element it needs to grow. Keeping dehydrated foods in airtight containers is beneficial in maintaining the dehydration levels required to keep food safe. Number 5. Sugar Just like salt, sugar is also used in preserving food since it helps absorb excess water which prevents the growth of microorganisms. This is why jams, jellies, and other fruit preserves don't go bad even after the jar has been opened. Number 6. Lemon or Lime Juice Lemon and lime have two acids that help in preservation. The ascorbic acid that acts as antioxidant and the citric acid that acts as a natural antibacterial agent. 
These two help in preserving the flavor, color, and taste of food. Lemon can also be used to keep other fruits and vegetables fresh. And this works well on avocados and apples. Now, are you ready to try two of the methods that I just shared with you? Don't worry, we only need ingredients you can easily find at home. Game? Alright, the first technique that we are going to try is brining. Let's start preserving! For brining, we are going to make some salted eggs. For this, we will be needing eggs, salt, white mounted jar, measuring cups, and cheesecloth. Now join me as we follow these steps. Boil 6 cups of water and 1 and a half cups of salt. Remove from heat and allow it to cool down. Carefully place 6 chicken eggs in a wide mounted jar. Pour the salt solution in the jar. Make sure that the eggs are completely soaked in the solution. Cover the mouth of the jar with cheesecloth. Keep it in a cool and dry place. Fry one egg after 12 days by cooking below boiling point for 15 minutes. Soak again if the eggs are not salty enough. Test for saltiness by cooking one egg after a few days until the desired level of saltiness is attained. Take note, duck eggs may need to be soaked longer. Salted egg are also known as itlog na pula or red egg because it is usually dyed red to distinguish it from a regular egg. They taste good with tomatoes and they are also used as toppings for delicacies such as puto and bibingka. Let's have the next one. This is also a commonly used technique at home. This time, we are going to use pickling in making one of our famous side dishes, papaya relish or most commonly known as achara. In making our own achara, we will be needing... 4 cups of grated fresh green papaya, 1 fourth cup of salt, 1 carrot peeled and sliced, 1 piece of fresh ginger peeled and sliced, 1 red bell pepper sliced into long strips, 2 green chili peppers sliced into thin rings, raisins, 1 cup of white vinegar, 1 cup of water, 1 cup of sugar, and 1 teaspoon of salt. Come on, let's begin! Toss the grated papaya with 1 4th cup of salt together in a large bowl. Allow to sit for 1 hour. Drain the liquid from the papaya and rinse thoroughly. Place the papaya in the middle of a large piece of cheesecloth and squeeze to drain as much liquid from the papaya as possible. Combine the papaya, carrot, red bell pepper, ginger, green chili peppers, and raisins together in a clean large bowl and mix. Transfer the mixture to clean and dry jars with lids. Stir 
pint of vinegar, water, sugar, and 1 teaspoon of salt together in a small saucepan. Bring to a boil for 5 minutes. Pour the vinegar mixture into the jar, making sure the vegetables are completely submerged in liquid. Allow the vegetables to marinate in the liquid at least one day before consuming. Store in the refrigerator between uses. This is probably the most famous appetizer in the Philippines because every region seems to have their own version of it. This sweet and sour tasting appetizer is usually served with fried dishes such as crispy pata, longganisa, sino, and even lechon manok. In addition, this can also give life to dull dishes. So that's it for our meaningful and yummy weekend. I hope you have a part knowledge about the natural preservatives and the science behind them. I hope you can try to do them at home too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Of course, to experience magical learning at home, check out Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. Just check the link in the description. Again, I am Teacher Det, reminding you to relax, keep calm, and stay crafty. See you again next week for more fun do-it-yourself videos here in Teacher Vival Weekend Special.